my name is Ahmed Asiget. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Nicosia. Can I quickly confirm your full name and date of birth, please? Andreas Nicolaou, born 15 February 1984. And how may I address you? Andreas is fine. Okay, Andreas, very nice to meet you. My supervisor has asked me today to perform a cranial nerve examination. Cranial nerves are the nerves that supply our faces and our necks. So I will be doing some movements with your face and I will uh, be testing your uh, vision. I'll be testing your ears for your um, hearing and I'll uh, ask you to do some movements with your tongue and the rest of your face so that I can assess the power and certain other modalities. How does that sound? Fine. Okay, great. Because I'm a medical student, I am being supervised and my supervisor might have to repeat this examination after I do. Are you still happy to proceed? Yeah, I'm happy. And having said that, you do have the right to withdraw consent at any time and it will not affect your care at this facility. Are you in any pain at the moment? No. Mm -hmm. Would you like a chaperone during this consultation? Oh, good. Very well. Shall we get started? Yeah. Upon inspection of the patient, the patient appears to be well. They're not distressed. I don't see any facial drooping or any asymmetry. There are no spectacles and I do not see any scars or hearing aids. In the surroundings, there are no writing aids. Um, I, again, I do not see any glasses and I don't see any medication as to suggest an ongoing pathology. So before we get started, with cranial nerve number one is the sense of smell. So have you noticed any changes in your sense of smell recently? No, no. How, how about your taste? Sense no. Of taste? Very well. For the second cranial nerve, two, three, four, and six are tested together, which is related to your vision. For this, I would like to ask you to stand up and please come here and stand in a three meter distance from the Snellen chart. And please cover one eye. Do you normally wear glasses? No. Okay, very well. Could you please read the lowest possible line for me? M, P, X, T, Z, F, H. Very well. Could you please cover your other eye and read the lowest possible line backwards this time? H, F, Z, T, X, P, N. Very well. The patient has a visual acuity of 6 over 4 and a half. You may sit down. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check your peripheral vision, okay? And for this, I'll be about 90 centimeters away from you. And I will be um, placing my hands in the midst distance, and I will ask you to cover one eye, and I will cover the opposite eye from you, and then uh, I will see, I will test your peripheral vision against mine, okay? So please cover one eye. I will cover the corresponding eye and place my hand in between. So please let me know when you see when you can see my hand wiggling in. I see it. Very well. Now? I see it. Very well. Please keep your eyes in the same position. I see. Very well. I see. Very well. Now we're going to cover the other eye and repeat this examination, okay? Now, now, very well, now, now, very well. So peripheral vision appears to be intact. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an imaginary H, the letter H in midair. I would like you to look at me, do not move your head, and just follow my finger with your eyes, okay? And do let me know if you see double at any time. Did you see double at any time? No. There's no double vision and there was no nystagmus during the movements. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check your pupils, okay? Upon first inspection of the pupils, they appear to be symmetrical in size. 
and shape. There appear to be no abnormalities with the pupils. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine light into your eyes. First starting with the left one and then the right one, okay? And every time I shine light into your eye, I will be checking uh, the, the eye that the shine has been, the, the light has been shown on and the other eye as well. So I'll be doing it twice, okay? Direct constriction in the left eye. Consensual constriction in the right eye. Now I'm going to do it on the other eye. Direct constriction in the right eye. Consensual constriction in the left eye. Very well. Now I'm going to flick it back and forth between the two eyes and check for any possible relative afferent pupillary defects. There is no optimal dilation of the eyes, therefore, of the pupils, therefore, there appears to be no relative afferent pupillary defect. Next, we'll check accommodation. Can you please look behind me in a distance? And then focus on my hand. Very well. The eyes accommodate well and they do constrict upon accommodation. Next, we're going to be testing your trigeminal nerve, which is nerve number five. It has a sensory output and a motor output. We'll be checking the sensory output first. This is a cotton ball. And I will place it on your chest first to see what it feels like. Do you feel it? Yeah. Does it feel like a cotton ball? Yes. And then I will go ahead and place it on different parts of your face. Let me know if you feel it and if it feels the same on both sides. Can't feel it. Yeah. Is it same on both sides? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very well. So the sensory output appears to be intact on all modalities of V1, V2, and V3. Next, we'll test the motor component. Can you please clench your jaw for me? The masseter tone appears to be intact and symmetrical on both sides. Next, could you please open your mouth against resistance? Very well. Can you please turn your chin towards my hand? And finally, we'll do the jaw jerk reflex. I'll be tapping gently with a tendon hammer. Open your mouth gently and relax it. There is no exaggeration of the Georgia reflex. Next, we're going to move on to the facial nerve. The facial nerve also has two components. The sensory component has to do with your tongue, the anterior two thirds of your tongue. Have you noticed any changes in your sense of taste recently? No. Okay, very well. Next, I will ask you to do some movements and resist my motion, okay? Uh, can you please raise your eyebrows? and resist my motion. Very well. Close your eyes very tightly and don't let me open them. Very well. Purse your lips together and don't let me open them. Open your mouth and give me a big smile. Very well, there is no asymmetry. Next, we're gonna uh, test your cranial nerve number eight, which has to do with your hearing, okay? I will start with a whisper test. I will cover one of your ears and whisper into your other ear. Let me know which number I'm telling you. 25. 33. Very well. The patient successfully uh, has passed a whisper test, meaning he heard both numbers correctly. Next, I will be um, flicking this tuning fork and this is the 512, the short tuning fork, the increased frequency, because this is heard better than it is felt, so I'm gonna be using this for our hearing test. I will flick it, place it by your ear, and then ask you if you hear it better by the side of your ear or on the bone in the back. At the front. 
very well. Air conduction is bigger than bone conduction, which is the way it should be. The sign of the phonogen. Very well. So air conduction is bigger than bone conduction in both ears, and this is a normal Weber's test. Renee's test, I, I apologize. For Weber's test, we will go ahead and place this tuning fork on your forehead, and let me know if the sound goes into one ear more than the other, or if it's heard equally, okay? It's equal, Mimi. Very well, so the sound doesn't lateralize to either ear, it is uh, heard equally, so this could be a normal Weber's test or could suggest a pathology, but we wouldn't be able to know without further testing. Next, we're going to be testing cranial nerves number 9 and 10. Okay, for this, can you please open your mouth and say ah for me? Uh, Very well, the palate elevates, the tongue retracts, and the uvula is midline. Can you please cough for me? <coughs> there is no evidence of bovine cough. Can you please take a sip of water and swallow it for me? The patient swallows normally, there is no choking. Very well. At this point, I would also check for patient's gag reflex, but we're not required to do this at this level. Next, we're going to move on to cranial nerve number 11, okay? For this, I will ask you to shrug your shoulders and resist my motion. Don't let me push him down. Very well. Next, please, um, you should position your face slightly to the right and turn your head against my hands. Very well. Now this time I will come from the opposite direction and again turn your head against my hands. Very well. No loss of power in either muscle group. For cranial nerve number 12, which is the last one, I will ask you to open your mouth but keep the tongue inside. There is no fasciculations, there is no wasting. Could you please stick out your tongue for me? There is no apparent deviation. And wiggle your tongue back and forth to the right and left. Again, normal symmetrical movements. Could you push your tongue against my finger? Very well. This time is more. Very well. So there appears to be no asymmetry. This concludes our cranial nerve examination. I would also perform a lower limb neurological examination and upper limb neurological examination for completion. Thank you very much.